Ryan Montgomery. I'm a field representative for St. Albans Co-op. And this is my presentation for the implementation of a milk production quota for St. Albans Cooperative. So the agenda for this presentation to start off with, I'll be talking about the overall problem of the dairy market today, as well as a solution to the problem followed by some benefits of this solution. So the first biggest problem that we have is that dairy farming today is completely mentally draining. From 2016 to 2018, three farmers underneath Agrimark Co-op, which is Cab Creamery, um, committed suicide in the state of Vermont. As prices for milk have gone down over the past five years, since 2014, we've been in a price slump. This is the longest that prices have been this low ever. So farm suicide rates have been rising, which is obviously a huge point of concern as far as mental health of the community goes. And to deal with this, St. Albans and Agumar Cooperatives back in 2017 actually sent out pamphlets detailing steps to take regarding um, suicide help. Basically, they gave farmers the number for the suicide hotline in the same envelope that their milk checks come in bi bi-weekly. So the economic situation that farmers are stuck in today is often leading to what could be considered a farmer's worst nightmare is having to sell their family farm that's been in the family for the past four, five, six, seven generations. So the market today is heavily, um, it incentivizes the consolidation and expansion of more and more farms. So what this does is it increases the amount, it decreases the amount of farms we have and increases the herd sizes, increasing distance between farms. So what this does is that it not only increases the distance that our food has to travel to make it to the table, but it also increases the amount of carbon emissions that we create because of the practices that are used on these industrial scale farms that are not the same as what would be done on say a 40 or 50 cow dairy in rural Vermont. Some other environmental issues that we have is that production on such a large scale involves a lot of non-sustainable practices and this can include things like nutrient runoff, which is when farmers spread, say, effluent or manure or slurry onto their fields and have it not be incorporated into the soil, but the next time it rains, if it's on a hillside, nutrients like nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus will run off into rivers, and the river will carry it to a larger river, which will eventually carry it to a lake, and create large algae blooms like the one seen in this picture here, which is not good for the environment or the health of the public. Carbon loss is also a huge problem because when farms, A, some farms turn over a lot of soil, which can cause a lot of evaporation of carbon into the atmosphere, and it can also, carbon loss is also caused by the nutrient runoff that I mentioned previously. Also, water waste is a very, very, very large, it has a very large impact on the environment. Livestock is one of the most water intensive industries. So industrial farming often is very wasteful of their water usage and they're not efficient with the way that they use their water. So basically the purpose, what a milk production quota does is it puts a cap on the amount of milk that a 
farmers will have a ship. So the red dotted line in this in this graph is the total is the price for fluid milk per hundred weight, and the blue line is milk produced in the country. And so you can see there's a large spike in milk price, followed by an immediately immediate spike in production. But soon after production spikes, the cost for milk almost immediately goes down. So what happens is the price for milk goes up, farmers realize that they need to take advantage of this market opportunity. So they start to make more milk, which in turn floods the market and drives the prices back down lower than they were before. So the idea of the production quota is to stabilize that and make it so that farmers cannot ship over X amount of pounds of milk. And that number is calculated on their history as a farm, how much they've produced in the past and their their efficiency and their farm size. So the point of the production quota, as I mentioned, was to stabilize raw milk prices, but also to keep small local family farms alive because in the current market, it's nearly impossible for 40 or 50 cow dairy farms to compete with four, five, six, seven, eight thousand cow farms in the Midwest that are producing milk at a rate that has never been seen before. And that's not to say that these larger farms are completely well off. They are subject to the same problems that smaller family farms are. It's just the fact that the owners are much more dependent on the farm on a smaller scale. The third thing that the milk production quota would do is to keep prices high by preventing that flooding of the market that I was talking about earlier. So a milk production quota would solve the problem of the mental health of farmers today by again stabilizing the market and creating a overall better financial situation for farmers and it would also reduce the incentive for farm expansion which would in turn stabilize the market even more and it would also decrease the need for farms to push the limits of production because they would be less worried about paying all their bills and making ends meet and more focused on making a quality product with what they have and not expanding. So salaries for new employees are projected to be anywhere between $200,000 and $300,000 per year. It can't, my budget quite can't, cannot quite be calculated at the moment due to the sheer lack of information that is accessible at the time. Information regarding the amount of farms underneath St. Albans Cooperative and the size of these farms is what I need to further um, further estimate a solid number for this. In closing, the benefits of this milk production quota would be to increase the farmer satisfaction and it would help the farmers be more it would help the cooperative by having the farmer be more on board with what the cooperative, anything, any rules or regulations that the cooperative does in the future to help them be more in support of the cooperative's decisions. It would also give the co-op a lot better public image because it would say that we care about our farmers and we really want our farmers to do well and we don't want situation. And finally, it would create a much more stable milk market and little producers who won't want to find alternative markets because 
we are providing them with a steady source of income that they don't have to worry about being there next year or the year after.